Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining me here. Wanted to break in and maybe do a quick little show about Mr. Eric Nelson. We're going to go back to the uh, Deadline Studio interview from the Tribeca 2017 Film Festival. This should be fun. Let's go ahead and go through some of this and stop me if you've heard this one. I'm sure you all have by now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Today is 11-12-2022. Breaking in here for this brief announcement. Very, very brief. Okay, so the interview itself, as you can see, um, is really only about five minutes or so. So uh, less than five minutes. So that's all. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. Gray State depicts the rise and fall of a American hybrid, a visionary filmmaker, a political activist, an Iraq veteran, a family man who is slowly driven into insanity by the accumulated forces of modern American culture. I've slowly driven into insanity. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that funny? So he's saying David Crowley is slowly driven into insanity. There's really no evidence of that. Again, there's no proof to back that up. But that's never stopped Eric Nelson from slandering David continuously. Um, in multiple interviews. This is just the one interview that I was able to find out there. There's another one that I'm looking for of him sitting on a couch. It's like in, it's in somebody's home or something. And um, <clears throat> so I think that's the other one of two interviews that I know of that Eric Nelson did during this this time. I'm sure there's a longer version of both of these, but listen to what he's saying about David Crowley. This is just crazy. An Iraq veteran, a family man who is slowly driven into insanity by the accumulated forces of modern American culture. I've it's an interesting concept, obviously, and for people who have never heard of David and don't know anything about this case, any of the relevant facts, um, they just are going to just take this guy at his word for it. And why, why wouldn't they at first glance? There's no reason not to at first glance. But listen to what he's saying. Look at what he's saying here. The accumulation of all this, this is what drives David into this madness that drives him crazy. The police are saying something very similar, too, that David is going crazy. <laughs> hey, Sophia. Thanks for joining here. Uh, what is? Let's see. I can't watch this yet. I'm still working on the blood spatter. Oh, okay. No problem. It'll, it'll be up. It will be up for your later TV enjoyment, I'm sure, at some point, but... This is this interview. I don't know. This is something I've been wanting to kind of do a little commentary on and finally got a couple minutes here and figured I'd work my way through this. Uh, hey, Catherine. Yes, we are. We are live. We are absolutely live. If you'd like to come in and join, you can <laughs> feel free as well. Let me know. I'll find a way to send you send you a link somehow. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just kind of running through. Um, this just this four four minute clip of Eric of Eric Nelson, and I uh, figured why not why not go through it with this guy? So I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I it's just it's just baffling. But let's go back and listen to exactly what he says here. Gray State depicts the rise and fall of a American hybrid: a visionary filmmaker, a political activist an Iraq veteran, a family man who is slowly driven into insanity by the accumulated forces of modern American culture. Modern American culture. I mean, it's just a bunch of hogwash. Hogwash, I would say. But that's just that's just me. Notice how he doesn't say anything um, about David being a Christian, right? He's only talking about things that would fit into the narrative. A family man, this guy. Um, uh, Sophia, uh, Catherine, I'm going to send this link to um, Facebook since that's the easiest, easiest way for me. Um, so you will have that link there and I'll continue on. Definitely feel free to hop on in. I've always been fascinated with... Um, 
self-generated documentaries. I produced Grizzly Man in 2005, which documented a man's depiction of his spiraling into madness in the world around him. Yeah, another one. This, does this guy just go after people that are spiraling into madness? Is that what he does? Is that his thing? His thing? I haven't seen the Grizzly Man, so I can't really comment too much on it. But I know the, the story of it, and obviously they don't use... Uh, they use this guy's own footage, so it's just, you know, yeah, let's just take everybody else's footage and why not do something with it? So, I mean, that's basically what Eric Nelson did with this, with the Grizzly Man. Um, I wish I could find more inter more interviews that he has done on it, on this case, but I found this one. There's another one out there, again, with him on sitting on a couch. That one's pretty interesting, too. That one's a little more frustrating than this one for 10 years was looking for a project that had that same kind of power and potential impact. And when I heard about the death of Treadwell and his family, I went online and I saw the material that he had posted online, the material that he thought was ready for the world, promoting his film and his life. And I was mesmerized and bowled over because the things he was putting online made me think, my God, if this is what he wants to share with the world, what is locked up in his hard drives? The quest began. Well, uh, a poet once said the purest. They'd love to show this um, photo or this. Yeah, it's a photo. They'd love to show this. Somehow this is supposed to um, show David spiraling into madness when this was taken in, I believe, 2012 or so. Um, so it's very interesting how what they choose. Remember, they have everything of, of David. So what they choose to use and what they choose not to should show you uh, everything you need to know about Eric Nelson, Nelson and his hit piece, the Sloppumentary by Eric Nelson. That should tell you just about everything you need to know. And the film obviously does not solve the case, does not even attempt to. It just attempts to confuse people and it attempts to um, go after the, the lazy people, the people who just want to um, believe David Crowley is guilty. It also goes after the good-hearted, innocent people who don't have time to really look into this case that are just going to watch this for the very first time and think, well, this must be true. It must be true. If it's on TV, it's true. No, I'm just kidding. But I think you get the point there. Products of America go crazy. And David Crowley went crazy, and David Crowley documented his own life and did it in such a way that makes me feel he knew that there was an ultimate end use for the thing. And he composed the music. He self did did his selfies, and I'm going to fault my, my silence phone. He didn't do selfies like this. He did selfies like this, sixteen That's by nine ratio. And even humble family movies, you can see in the film if you watch closely, he is talking to his wife and he, he puts the selfie down and you can hear him rustling papers and propping it up. So he has the perfect aspect ratio. And you're thinking, why would he do this? What, what would well, because you want the best, the best quality. I mean, you should always put the camera that way, I would think, not, not the way that, um, you know, the other way. I don't know what the big deal is about putting the camera this way i hold my camera this way i never do photos this way sorry unless i want you know a full body shot maybe but otherwise it should always be this way that should be a standard rule what do you think Captain? well yeah when you're doing landscape you're getting a, a wider view so of course you're going to do landscape if you're doing portrait it's so narrow i mean david was a filmmaker for crying out loud <laughs> I, I maybe I missed his his point. Maybe he hasn't gotten to the point there of why it's such a big deal to have the camera that way. But I didn't look at it and say, "Oh, why? Why is why is the camera placed like that?" It wasn't a big deal to me. Oh, because it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, it's what we all do. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not in film or anything, but I would think anyone who is in film should know that. Yeah. But whatever. I'll continue on wife and he he puts the selfie down and you can hear him rustling papers and propping it up so he has the perfect aspect ratio and you're thinking why would he do this what was he thinking why is he documenting this 
like Grizzly Man, we had um, I see a team of five people who were looking for interesting things in the Treadwell material, which was about 90 hours. Why is he documenting this? Why is he do well, doesn't he say many times why he's documenting all of this? Isn't that pretty pretty clear why David Crowley is documenting all, all of this? Probably because he's planning for the future. Not too many people would document this and then do what he's accused of. And which which time is he referring to here when David is filming Kamel? I think he's – it's it's hard to tell, but I think he's referring to when um, – Kamel is telling him about the experience, about the hearing the voices, because there's only a couple clips that make it in into the film that really use that. So that's my guess. I don't know. Maybe he's talking about every single time. But Does, um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't his journal in his journal explain that he's doing that because he's concerned about her and he wants to keep a record of what she's saying because he's right. concerned for his wife? I thought this Eric Nelson knew what the hell he was doing. He just makes a big deal about the camera <laughs> being, you know, portrait, I guess. I don't know. Well, being landscape. Portrait landscape, portrait. yeah. Portrait, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not being, not being not portrait, being portrait right. right? Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know. What do you think, Sophia? Here we are. We're all in portrait now. So. <laughs> Honestly, I think he's over-dramatizing or dramatizing. Okay, however you say the word, I'm sorry. Having trouble today. I honestly, it's just bullshit. Excuse me. <laughs> That's what it is. You know, he's just trying to make excuses for why David is quote unquote crazy. Mm -hmm. And see, landscape is so much better. Yeah, it looks yes. good. You can see all my books in the background and see <laughs> everything else. You know, it's not just about me. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, is if you're going to record something, landscape is easier for a person to watch. Just like you always hear the, okay, maybe you don't, but I've seen memes where it says, if you're going to fight on Black Friday, uh, make sure that those recording it do it in landscape and not poetry it. <laughs> so, okay, I, that's just, it's just that's common courtesy. More. Yeah, I I don't know why he makes a big deal about that or what the what the relevance is towards it. But I, listen, I mean, this interview is only four minutes or so, four and a half minutes, and I really don't know what point he's trying to make. It's just a bunch of slander towards David. That's really it. Yeah. And in this project, I went through everything, and I had a, a small team of editors who were. He went through everything with the small team of editors. That's very important stuff there. It was a small team of editors. I think right. we know a, a few of them. Putting oh, yeah. together the various sequences from Crowley's archive. So we just sort of saw what was there. And then we became familiar with this vast amount of footage. And every time we would just make these discoveries, there's this footage that he shot, we called it the basement tape where he's in the basement of his home acting out scenes from Transformers with a beautiful, just this madness scene. And it, it, oh my gosh. Tra you know, it's beautiful madness. <laughs> madness is so beautiful. <laughs> he really so, does like that word, huh? <laughs> he does. He does. Talk madness about reading what you want into things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> To me, I see somebody who's either practicing the scene or he's just playing around or he might be recording audio footage to put in to one of the scenes. Mm -hmm. And why, why he, focus? Why, why would Eric Nelson need to focus on that? Right. Because it quote unquote makes David look mad. Right. And, crazy. and those that's all that he's using. He's got everything. He's got everything. He's not going to use anything that's going to make David look good, except for in those first 20, 30 minutes, maybe, but not towards the end. But the thing is, is he totally skips over the part where Kamal calls and he turns down the music or pauses it. And he just he's like totally normal. So whatever David was doing, he was either role playing or he was practicing. It wasn't like he was insane or something. 
Yeah. Was it he wasn't trying to live out the Transformer movie or something? No, <laughs> you know, I I used to be a performer, and also in college when um, during speech class, it's very common that especially because David was he he performed in his own movies as well as writing and he did so much stuff. That's true. That's true. And what we always did and as a performer we would videotape ourselves in practices people do it all the time musicians do it all the time because you see you can see what you look like you can see how it's coming across on film and so it makes perfect sense that david would be doing this it doesn't make sense that he's making a big deal out of it except he likes to twist things so if mm -hmm. he does that and if you're and if you don't know that that's what um, people in the artistic world do, you're going to think, oh, he's on to something. But everybody, just stop and think of every performer, you know, go on YouTube. How many people do you see them filming themselves as they're practicing a song? How many people film themselves as they're doing a cover and singing over another song and then posting it? And that's okay. But if David's doing it, all of a sudden now it's madness. Yeah, I mean, look at TikTok. Everybody is doing it. Is everybody insane? Well, I mean, probably <laughs> half, but <laughs> they might be. <laughs> I mean, just everybody's doing it. Let's see what else he's got to say. Oops. It's a Travis Bickle moment. It was just such an amazing scene. And he shot three. Who's Travis Bickle? Anyone know who that is? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look him up right now. Oh, Travis. Travis Bickle. That's a dated reference, I'm sure. But Beautiful. <laughs> just this madness scene. and it. His whole movie, the whole sloppy entry is madness. Taxi driver. Taxi oh, okay. driver. Uh, he was the protagonist. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that's the Rob, Rob. That's the Robert De Niro character. Interesting. Yeah. The taxi driver. Interesting. Okay. Very cool. More people in madness. Everything's madness with this yep. guy. <laughs> it's all madness. He's madness. It, 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 you know, it's a Travis Bickle moment. It was just such an amazing scene, and he shot three of them. What Werner Herzog brought to this project for me was. A constant reassurance. He shot three of those scenes like that. That's it. Of, of all the stuff he had, only three of those scenes. Interesting. That shows real madness. <laughs> that I wasn't if you look at, okay, oh, can you pause for a second? Yeah. If you look at David's BX and Hothead channels, mm -hmm. he has several different like video clips or or shorts where. It's almost like Travis Bickle kind of stuff going on, if you want to go with that. Just kind of really weird insanity. But it's all acting. And it's kind of almost like method acting in a way, too. Mm. I think that's the right term for it, where a lot of it is just body language and facial expressions and everything. <laughs> so... These actors anyway, are, a, are a special breed. I'll definitely say that. They're yeah. a special breed. I, I checked out of that a long time ago, fortunately. <laughs> it wasn't see, crazy. Hot head, <laughs> hot head, he has, which by the way, I am not very happy about certain videos disappearing off of Hot Head and BX. Somebody obviously has control of those. Are they still disappearing or... Uh, recently or there was one that I remember watching on on the BX exchange and it was them setting the stage and they were taking blood and like flicking it and spraying it onto the walls yeah, and that was video that with was animation? completely scrubbed I think it was and that video was scrubbed off of their site I think I have it somewhere if you can find it I would love to have it I did but, a whole okay. stream, like a whole um, replay stream. I don't know if it was on this channel or if it was on my original one. Go ahead. Let's see. Uh, they have For the Bitch, Pandemic. Uh, what else? Coin Toss, which is more With of the chest. Uh, 
Yeah, the chess one. That one, the Science of Self movie trailer. Science. Yeah, that one's good. I like that one. And then the um the one with the um, live news clip also was yeah, interesting. That was a good one. He's a really good filmmaker. Yeah, he and he's working with the things that he knows and what he has available to him, and he is able to make all this come he's together. Working like, he's working like this. That's it. Yeah, and not like this. Not like that. <laughs> the shaky cam thing too. Okay, That's you guys. Me crazy. Okay, uh -oh. do you see the difference between my camera? Yeah. And your camera? Do we see anything? iPhone. Uh, mine's not an iPhone. What do I have? Oh, iPhone. the the clip. Hey, what oh. is that? Oh, <laughs> it's covered. Oh, you have. It's covered. My okay. cameras are covered. <laughs> I, oh, you're one of those. Okay. Oh no, no, no. I for very good reason. The job that I worked last, my my employer, um, when I found out that they access everybody's, and and it kills me. People take these into the bathroom, and you don't cover your camera. Your camera is accessed. They're watching every freaking thing you do. And yes, I know this for a fact. Can't tell you how or why, but I know it. So immediately when I found this out, I went home and I covered every TV, every camera, because I would go into work and, and I'm like going, why are you guys cameras and your laptops covered and they looked at me and they go oh you'll find out <laughs> i i cover them all i never leave anything uncovered so you guys cover your cameras or don't take your phone in the bathroom one of the two <laughs> <laughs> well david covered his too his yeah. uh, i don't know about his camera but he definitely covered his uh laptops. laptop he, yeah because i don't know i don't know what they had back then but he should have so yeah and i yeah, tell and i tell everybody i go i know you're gonna think i'm crazy but uh, you know, cover them, cover them. <laughs> I wish I could uh, block the microphone too, because they listen through your microphone and they look through your cameras, but oh, well. There's, there's certain cases like this, this phone I have comes with the, with the, an exterior case or an, a case that covers, that covers the cameras for you. Um, and then you just clip it on, clip it off, but that's pretty oh. cool. When it's like this, yeah, there's nothing on both sides, right? Cause there's like what, four cameras on some of these ones. Yeah, look, look at how many things you plugged up. I think you did uh, one of those is a flash. Yeah, this still. is the flash. Yeah. Okay. And I cover that for a reason as well. But yeah, three, four cameras total, three in the back and one in the front. Okay. Yeah. All covered. I wonder if Eric Nelson, he, he didn't cover his either, huh? When he showed his phone. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's safe. He's got this like weird Woody, Woody Allen ripoff image yeah. going on here but all right let's see what he's that's got to say kind of his mo he just rips off everything <laughs> oh woody better be careful not going to madness and we'll make a <laughs> film about him it's a project <sighs> and the problem is if you're looking to Werner herzog for a reality check on craziness you may be kind of in the wrong wrong orbit but he was tremendously supportive what does that mean? I don't. I don't know. And the I name guess he's dropping. Calling Warner crazy. <laughs> okay, Warner's crazy. His his everybody's um, crazy. Uh, mentor. Everybody's crazy except him, which is usually yeah. what a crazy person thinks. <laughs> he's the only sane one. Crazy people don't ask themselves if they're crazy. Right. They don't realize they're... it. Yeah. And really liked the film and reassured me that the tree I was barking up was the right tree. Politically, it's a core sample of American crazy. It's not just the politics. A core oh, sample oh, oh, of oh, American stop that crazy. For a second. Wow. What? So half of America <laughs> is crazy then, because <laughs> from what you and I found, Catherine, all the stuff that he was saying about the right wing and stuff like that, and how we're all conspiracy nut jobs. And now he's saying politically. Yeah, like he totally didn't do this politically. I wonder this who, who <laughs> I wonder who Eric Nelson's voting for <laughs> <laughs> year <laughs> after year. I could give we a got, pretty yeah. They got the Fetterman and Zombie or whatever he is, Uncle Fester. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's too much. I know. That's why I can't wait for him to write my chapter on him. 
I'll go back a little bit just for fun. The film and reassured me that the tree I was barking up was the right tree. Politically, it's a core sample of American crazy. It's I mean, he's basically saying that he has this agenda. He's barking up a certain tree. This film is mm -hmm. not about telling you um, what really happened here. It's not. And unfortunately, it was marketed like that to a lot of vulnerable people and a lot of good hearted, innocent people, too. But um, this this was this was made for people who desperately want to be believe that David Crowley is guilty and do not want to look any further into this case. That's the way that I've mm -hmm. always felt about this. And it was to paint a certain side of America or a certain political side as Looney Tunes and conspiracy nut jobs. That's true. Yeah, and that kind of I, that kind of went over over my head. I think the first time that I that I watched the film, I didn't really get that from the film, but but listening to Eric Nelson, listening to the people who, the critics, the film critics, and everything was either Alex Jones, Donald Trump, right wing, et cetera, et cetera. It was it was never just about about David about David Crowley and why he spiraled into madness. It, had, it was always about all of these other things that are trigger words for a lot of people. And so it's gonna yeah. make them think, oh, okay, well, if he was with them, if, you know, if, if, if David Crowley is associated with Donald Trump, if he's associated with Alex Jones, if he's associated with, with the, the right, right wing, then, uh, or they called it alt-right, it was called alt-right. Yeah. And which I don't even think was a term that a existed when David was still with us, but it's just like a, it's a big mind game. And uh, that's really troublesome because I don't like to see people getting tricked. I have no problem with people putting the information out there and if people disagree with everything that I'm saying, then fine. But I do not like when people purposely go out and trick other people, period. Exactly. And if you notice his wording, he says that he spoke with Warner, where he's saying Werner. If you notice, he uses the V and the W. But anyway, he's talking to Warner Herzog. And he says, Warner tells him he's barking up the right tree. Well, Warner didn't had never read any of the documents. So he's wording this. If you're not paying close attention, people are going to think, oh, then he's telling the right story. Mm. Well, if you don't know that Warner doesn't know a darn thing about the freaking case, what he's telling them is you're barking up the right tree and presenting it the way you are. If that's where you want to go, that's interesting. Is what it is. So it's like, you know, this guy, they, they double speak. In fact, they like triple speak. I swear. So he may have tricked uh, Warner or Werner, both of them. He may have tricked them, tricked him into thinking, oh yeah, this must be the real story. Well, this must be it. They probably didn't even care because they're they're looking at it from a, a movie standpoint. And is it going to get views? Or are they going to make money? And yeah. so he's like going, oh, well, OK, yeah, if that's what you're doing, you're doing it right, because that will lead people and then you'll get what you want. So. But barking yeah. up the right tree and in, in, in regard to the case and any information. No, because, again. Warner Herzog had zero information. He didn't know about this case. The documents right. hadn't even come out really by then. Yeah. They had just all this data uh, that they did not feel necessary to use, which really sucks. Mm -hmm. To me, that really sucks that they're because they had all of this stuff that they could have used. And for whatever reason, I think we know what reason, but they didn't want to. It did not fit into the story they wanted to tell. And mm -hmm. it just is more more proof that they are trying to paint this portrait of of David that is not accurate is is not truthful and that's really bad that's 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 sad and uh, you know that will come back to to haunt them if it hasn't already I'm sure it has. Let's see, just a few more it's minutes. Not just the politics. It's the selfie culture. It's the narcissistic. Idea. <laughs> but there's a selfie culture. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> How old is this guy? I mean, I feel like I'm out of it sometimes with the this the the kids, the hip kids, and everything. I didn't know there was a selfie culture. I had no idea about that. But okay, we'll go with it. We'll go with the selfie culture because it's not just the pol the politics. It's the selfie culture too. That's that's something we got to be really concerned about. Is we don't take selfies. 
It's madness. It's crazy. It's not just <laughs> it's politics. Mad. It's the selfie culture. It's the narcissistic idea that I can make a Hollywood movie in my backyard with my friends and I'm going to sell it. I can become a YouTube star. What is this? This guy's really is painting He's David. Angry because David was doing it and he was doing it on his own. That's jealousy. Did you see his reaction? You read mm -hmm. his body language was just, it was like vitriol toward David. He's pet, oh, angry because David well, that... was doing something he could never do. <laughs> yep. We'll go back to the <laughs> no, it's watch, the watch selfie it. culture. It's the narcissistic idea that I can make a Hollywood movie in my backyard with my friends and I'm going to sell it. Look I can that. become a YouTube star. I can become a YouTube star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's anger and vitriol towards someone who was doing something he was he he couldn't even do in Hollywood. And here David did do it in his quote unquote backyard. And not back only that, David got Hollywood to buy it. Oh my gosh. This is such a crappy person. Oh yeah. my gosh. This is eye opening. He's Greg, I've never seen this before. Thanks. See, He's and good. I've always said that he had something against David. I've always said it. Sorry, I have allergies so bad. <clears throat> I, I wonder if David would have leaned a little bit more blue if, um, you know, this guy wouldn't have jumped on this on this case. And I think David did lean a little bit more blue, by the way. <clears throat> well, independents tend to. Libertarians, mm -hmm. you know, they tend to. I mean, there's some politics that they will lean towards blue. That's why they're libertarians. It's like they're a mixture of the red and the blue. But, and in a lot of ways, I'm more libertarian than I am conservative. Well, I am conservative, but more than uh, GOP. So I've always yeah. wondered how many people that believe David killed himself and killed his family how many of them are either left or right or in between? I've always wanted to do a poll, but I know that would just start a huge fight <laughs> in the group. So, but it's it's interesting because a lot of the people that I have talked to or that I've observed that believe that David is guilty, I mean, straight up believe that David is guilty, they lean more politically left than they do right yeah and so anyway it's just a yeah i've seen i've i've definitely seen seen both um and yeah i think the reason why if you were to do a poll there may be a big argument or something like that is because there are so many people on all different sides with all different um different theories and views and political views and everything who probably all you know get it and they get it that there is still something really really wrong here um and because uh this was still coming off the barack o obama really it went from the bush anti-war thing where you know that's where i kind of got involved in was with the um the second bush this bush jr war you know after nine one one, and i was I was a Demo Democrat, I always vote and always grew up like that. And so then when Barack o Obama was, was pretty much following and keeping this war going, I think it changed a lot of things. For, for me, it really made me think differently. You know, I shouldn't think of things in terms of red, blue, of this party, that, that party. And I really started to change my, my focus. And um, so that's why it's pretty interesting that David is a lib libertarian because he can get crap from both sides, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the red, from the blue, from those bleeding, the ones that bleed both both colors. But I mean, I, I still think there are a, a lot more people that just, you know, when it really comes down to it, they really don't care. Red, blue, let's find, let's get, let's get the best person. We're going to, we want to vote for, for the best person. We want to support the best person. And also I'm not going to look down on somebody or treat somebody differently because their views are different than mine, unless they attack me, then we got a problem. But aside from, from that, like, I really, it really doesn't 
bother me that that much, you know, where people people lean. And it's interesting that Eric Nelson and a lot of these people who are saying that David Crowley was guilty never mentioned him being a Christian. To me, that's a lot more Im important than focusing on his political views or him filming in a backyard. I mean, Eric Nelson mentions backyard. He mentions basement two trigger keywords, two things that you would say. They're to demeaning. Some, they're very mm -hmm. demeaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you watch the BX videos, see, that's, I know exactly where he's getting the backyard from is because some of the promo videos for the BX to send to people saying, Hey, you know, come bring your business to us in Minnesota is filmed in a backyard. And it has the, please help us sign up there on the back of a house that they're filming in. It's from 10 years ago. And it's really, really interesting that mm. he did say that because it's right there in their stuff. What is ANCAP? I've never heard of ANCAP. Jet's, uh, Jet mentioned that in the, in the chat. I really don't know what that is. Oh, wait, come on, Jet. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anarcho-capitalism. Anarch oh, anti so status, anarch libertarian, anti political. Yeah. Anti political. I, yeah. Okay, I can see mm -hmm. that. Multiple times into spiritual awareness and believe that there are demons possessing, you know, my wife. The, there's a, it's a the strange a religion that the tree I was barking up was the right tree. Politically, it's a core sample of American crazy. It's not just the politics, it's the selfie culture. It's the narcissistic idea that I can make a Hollywood movie in my backyard with my friends and I'm going to sell it. I can become a YouTube star. I can shift religions multiple times into spiritual awareness and believe that they're demons possessing you know, my wife. The, there's a, it's a, the strange epicenter of all of these different things that that define America. Can you pause now. it for a second? So it's David never said that demons were possessing his wife. Nope. That is him making that up. Yeah, and the way that he says all that is very it's almost like he doesn't even know what, what he's what he's talking about. He's just kind of throwing like this they're throwing things at this wall at this bloody mm -hmm. wall. They're just throwing everything up there because that's what you do when you're very desperate and you don't have a very solid theory. You don't have a very solid view on this case. And you want to, uh, what he's claiming David wanted to do was to make, to make money, to be a star. Um, kind of sounds like that's what Eric Nelson is trying to, to do too. I don't believe Eric Nelson is doing this for free because he cares, because he wants to help this family. I don't believe he's going to donate any proceeds that are made from this film to this family to help them grieve or anything like that. So what is, what is, he, what is the motivation for Eric Nelson to make a sloppy-mentary on David Crowley? If it's, it's, it's you know. To, uh, to form opinions to get everybody to believe of, um, his line of thinking and make money. Yeah. How really much money did things. he make off of this? No. Would have had to have been a good amount to get the Netflix deal, um, to get it on on A and, and E. At, it only aired there once, maybe twice. Um, but still, I'm sure they all got paid for for that too. And then the the Netflix deal, that was probably a pretty big deal too. I know that you know, you know, a lot of we, I hear a lot of stories that you don't really make that much from Netflix. I don't know, but you can also buy it. Uh, and then I think, well, didn't you say it's on Discovery now? Mm -hmm. So I mean, they're going to keep moving it. Yeah, and that's that's a big that um, that's a big platform. I think that's going to be a pretty big platform going forward. I think the I think they're the Paramount is part of that too, right? I believe so. Anyways, I'm waiting for Star and Trek to come back. And also, he mentions a demon entering his wife. He's taking that type of an uh, analogy straight from the 2013 script. 
because yeah. David doesn't talk about demons and stuff like that, but the 2013 script does. And so, anyway, I'm wondering where he either read that script or he's being told about it from other people who knew about that script. It could be. I mean, based on the videos I saw from David, that's what I got out of it. I don't, I don't think it's that far, far fetched to think that that's what, what was, was happening there. Um, you know, and we don't know if he has other clips or anything that he chose not to use either, especially if he had quote unquote, everything, if he got everything there. It's very interesting. The clips that he chooses to use and the ones that he doesn't and how he uses them and where he, he puts them as far as a timeline. This is not like a timeline film. A lot of the stuff in Eric Nelson's sloppy are not in sequence. They're purposely yeah. out of, of sequence to draw this painting of David, of who he wants you to think David is, which a lot of people I just believe are just not, not buying it. And Eric Nelson had to have known that. So he's not catering to, the gray state fans he's mm -hmm. uh, he's not catering to real researchers who want to know what happened here so who is he catering to the everyday joe schmo that's not going to look into it but will pay it attention and get a money yeah so it's less about the politics if trump is the symptom i think this film is about the disease. I think it's a, in some ways, a cautionary Yikes. tale. I think people should think <laughs> twice before putting on Facebook. I think they should think twice about. That's that's going to be that's going to so be a good quote for the book. The politics. If Trump is the symptom, I think this film is about the disease. I think it's a. See, this is interesting here because <laughs> we hear I hear this a lot about, and I don't even know if if uh, <clears throat> David Crowley knew who Donald Trump was aside from whatever he may have read or anything like that. But at, at this point in 2014, you know, Trump is not running for president yet. I know he's talked about it. He's talked about it since the nineties, you know, mm -hmm. and he's been out there. He's been in movies. He's been on wrestling shows. He's been on films. He had it, the popular TV show. So maybe that's where it comes from. So I've never watched, but um, it's just very weird how he's saying the symptom. How do you have, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how he. Why do they want to really tie David Crowley to Donald Trump? Just doesn't seem like there's anything there. Donald Trump is more of a Democrat, if anything. It's well, he fast. doesn't. The all right. That's the problem, and this the is what I'm talking about. This is the perfect example of him picking and putting in just thoughts to grab some. Because now with that comment, he's going to get a whole bunch of the the um, what Democratic Party. To latch on that's right oh yeah go if they that's like right. donald trump then i'm gonna hate david and that's all he's doing he's just he's he's throwing out bait that people will pick up on and not pay attention to what he calls the core you know they won't pay attention at all yeah hmm. interesting and the thing is is david was not alt right he was a libertarian technically he did not even fit into that term or that definition of what alt right is. Do they and, just label alt uh, libertarians as alt right? Is that what they're what they're doing? Because I've hear I hear this term alt right uh, so many so, and it's like there's no alt left as far as I know. Well, when Obama was president, it was always oh you're a racist, you know, blah blah blah, anything to shut you down. And then once Trump got into office, oh you're a Nazi, right? Right. Everybody got called that. Anybody who disagreed got called a Nazi or a fascist, you know, that kind of thing. It's it, These are just words to shut people down. Anybody who doesn't think like the left is all right. Mm. It doesn't matter anymore because that's how politicized this whole world or polarizing it's been. You know, it's just you're either left or you're right and Nothing is in the middle anymore. And it's sad, honestly, that you can't yeah. enjoy a documentary without a political agenda now. So when this came out 2017, so 
Trump had uh, let's see, 27, 28, so just he had one. just he just got into office. So I can mm -hmm. totally see why and Eric Nelson needs to latch on to that, needs to latch on to Alex Jones, having Alex Jones in the film. It's a very polar, these are two polarizing people. And mm -hmm. um, he's trying to mix David into that and make David a polarizing character. I don't think David is. I think the case is. Mm -hmm. The case itself can be very polarizing and very toxic. And um, it can create other problems. I know I've had people who, would would watch my my channel until they found out that i that i like trump and until they found out that i voted for him that i fully supported him and then things change you know and what it was it didn't matter if we agreed on david crowley because we disagreed on uh trump um then that became a a big issue um with with alex jones it was the this the same thing people alex jones fans you know and i would tell them man you know this guy whatever you want to say about alex jones but if he's so brave if he's so you know if he cares so much why 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 didn't he even talk about the case why didn't he give it mm -hmm. a platform why isn't he looking into it he's looking into so many other things beings from other countries into gay frogs into suicidal shrimp he'll talk about that but he won't talk about david crowley that's pretty suicidal interesting. Suicidal shrimp? Me. Suicidal <laughs> shrimp, yes. He actually, what does Alex that Jones even mean? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I mean, there's so many funny memes, so many funny clip video clips out there. If you Google Alex Jones suicidal shrimp, it is just some of the funniest stuff I've ever heard. Um, I guess the shrimp jump, they jump off the, uh, the, the cliff and die to their death or something. I don't know. I don't know how a shrimp commits it. I think what, what he was really saying is uh, the shrimps, th there's something that the chemicals that goes into the, to the water that make the shrimp, in the water. <laughs> they go crazy. And instead of running against whatever eats shrimp, you know, whatever fish and everything, they run towards them. I think that was what Alex Jones was really saying, but obviously it was just, too funny for anyone to even take seriously to get. I want to watch this point. clip now. It's so funny. <laughs> there's a there's I'm I'm not a I'm not a Howard Stern fan. I was way way back when, but um, there's a good Howard Stern clip where Alex Jones is on Howard Stern talking about it. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It's just so funny. Um, anyways, back to this guy. Um, let me pull it up here, Mr. Nelson. in some ways a cautionary tale. I think people should think twice before putting on Facebook. I think they should think twice about how they manage their life. This is a cautionary tale, really. This is a, a warning to to all of us who, who make videos in our backyards and um, recite film scripts in our basements and then jump on Facebook. <laughs> And and record YouTube videos to try and to get record famous. YouTube videos. <laughs> wow, I mean, basically, it's just saying don't do anything. Just yeah, don't. <laughs> Sadly, so it's less about the politics. I gotta hear that again. The, there's a it's a the strange epicenter of all of these different things that that define America today. Sadly, so it's less about the politics. If Trump is the symptom, I think this film is about the disease. I think it's a, uh, in some ways, a cautionary tale. I think people should think twice before putting on Facebook. I think they should think <laughs> twice about how they manage their lives to the outside world. I think they should think twice about what news sites they read. I do think they should. It's a cautionary tale in some. What news? He's talking about Alex Jones right there. What news? He's pretty. He's pretty passionate about about this. But I think he's trying to fit his own personal views into David Crowley's life. Yep. Boy. Uh, and, you know, the fact that there is no, this, I call this the feel bad film of 2017. There is no easy, tidy ending where everything sorts out. We all sing Kumbaya and the Wookiee gets a medal at the end of the film. It's not that. Is that why he it's, had it's paleo running picture. around in the backyard at the very end? To make everybody feel good? Mm-hmm. Except it just creeped a lot of people out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, here's here's the dog that ate everybody, according to what the official theory is. And let's just show him running around. And who knows? Maybe he'll take a bite out of one of the filmmakers or something. <laughs> he should have. 
That's pretty interesting. That's a Star Wars reference, which uh, Warner Herzog got a part in the Mandalorian TV series, which I didn't even realize. I had no idea who Warner Herzog was or what he looked like. And I'm watching this Star Wars TV series be, way, be, right before I canceled my Disney Plus. And um, <laughs> who is this guy? This actor is horrible because Werner Herzog is not really an actor. As far as I know, he's not an actor. I don't know. Maybe he is. If he is, him and Danny Mason would just be like <laughs> neck and neck. Like right there on the same <laughs> level. But when, when Werner Herzog's character got killed off in that story, I was very happy. So I was like, okay, now I can really get into this because it's just, uh, it's just something about something about it. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's hard to follow some of this stuff that Eric Nelson is saying. That's why, you know, it's Maybe. sometimes I like going back and looking at this. I mean, it could be the editing for this clip, too. That's true. Like the four minutes. Because it seems like all over the place and everything that he's doing is, you know, Anything that David believed in was bad. Everything I believe in is good. Don't post on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, think think that's, twice that's before literally... posting. On... He even talks about a um, like the way that you that you pre present yourself to the public, as if you shouldn't just be yourself. You shouldn't just present yourself the way that that you are. It's almost like mm -hmm. saying you need to be fake. You need to be. It's a cautionary tale, so you should be cautious about letting people know who you really are. When really, Facebook, so social media, you know, that is how it, it should be. It should not be a bunch of fake people doing fake things. You know, it's it really could be used in that way. But Facebook could all and social media could be used in a in a good way too. You can also use that to be your 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 yourself where you don't have to be fake you don't have to act like you're like your life is so great you don't have to act like you're this fake person that's what hollywood is right we don't want another ex another extension of the hollywood flavor what's nice about youtube and facebook is you can be yourself put yourself out there and that's it you know you don't have to be to be fake you don't have to conform to these certain things or sacrifice your your soul to get on camera you can just do it yourself in your backyard and, and in your basement as i prefer i call this the feel bad film of 2017 there is no easy tidy ending where everything sorts out we all see that's it. another good quote too the feel bad film of 2017 i like that one i think he's actually got that wrong it's the leave a bad taste in your mouth film of 2017 and 2018 and probably every year after yes that too. yes <laughs> <laughs> you won you won eric kumbaya and the wookie gets a medal at the end of the film it's not that. It's it's you know it's not just the Wookiee that gets a, a medal at the end of the film. Everybody yeah. gets a medal at the end of the film. He, has this guy even seen Star Wars? That's what <laughs> it's meant to be chewed over. It's meant to be watched twice. It's meant to be dissected. It's meant to be analyzed. And anyone's analysis. Well, you did a great job because we, here we are, Picking five it years apart. later. <laughs> yeah, analyzing it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission. Now let's let's give him his own medal. Let's send him a medal here. It's, it's meant to be chewed over. It's meant to be watched twice. It's meant to be dissected. It's meant to be analyzed. And anyone's analysis of what happened is probably as good as mine. What we've done is tried to present, in, in essence, the story in as true a fashion as we can. And and that's why you fail because it's not the story in its truest fashion. It is the hit piece. It is your your view, what you think happened here. It not even in its truest fashion, in the most manipulative fashion, and just the, the fakest thing that I've ever ever seen. I've never seen a film like this. It's where they treat reason. yeah, where they treat David Crowley like they treat the character a U.S. soldier like this. It's really well, sad. I will, I will say that you know because when it, I have to hand it to mr nelson here he was the one who led me to understand that david was innocent 
you know, because I it's that was one of the first things I first heard about David Crowley from Richie from Boston. And then I saw something. I found you guys this group. And then I go, well, I don't really know if these guys really know what's going on. And then I watched that that stupid, as you call it, sloppy which is perfect. I watched that. And the first thing I did after it was over, I went to Facebook and I went to join your group. Because <laughs> I'm like, there's no, this is so wrong. There's so many things wrong with this. It's not funny. So it led me to the path to where I am today. So thank you, Mr. Nelson, for showing me how screwed up you were and wrong you were. Actually, the version of the documentary that I saw warned people not to go to the group. Really? Yeah. I remember this. They threw that in there. I was like, <laughs> this was in 2017. No, it was, was it 2017 or the end warning, of 2017? Warning, warning, <laughs> When it first came out that week before New Year's, mm -hmm. I watched it. It popped up. I thought, oh, this is a documentary. It looks good. And I started watching it and I'm like, wait a minute, what is going on here? Because like I've said numerous times, I mean, to, I mean, just so many times is that I was lied to and I knew it. And as soon as I got to the end of the movie and it's and basically they're talking and they're saying, you know, don't go to the group. The group is, you know, just propaganda and false information, that kind of stuff. I'm I'm ad libbing now because I can't remember exactly what it was saying, but there was a reason why they didn't want people going to the group. And so I immediately went to Facebook and looked <laughs> up the group. I was like, maybe I could find the truth here because they're making a point to say, don't go to the group. <laughs> so well, I saw how how they had purposely <clears throat> um minimized you and Dan. And I noticed that you and Dan were the only two people who had anything, who were even questioning the um, official narrative and mm -hmm. everybody else was jumping on board. And the people I was, I watch behaviors. I watch facial expressions, the micro things that that happen, like a flitch of an eye. I watch all these things and I'm watching these people and I'm like going, they're all very uncomfortable. They're lying. Some of them are just making stuff up on the spot. Some are saying stuff they think is true. And I'm like, but yet here, and I'm not blowing smoke up you and Dan's backsides. That's not it. But I'm watching what you had to say and then what Dan had to say. And <laughs> you're like, where's the smoke? There's I'm just smoke. checking. Just checking. <laughs> but, anyway, <laughs> um, but you guys were coming at it from a different angle. You weren't, um, you didn't, you didn't present and talk in the same manner as everybody else. So I'm like, wait a second. You got, like you were saying, Sophia, you know, all these guys were just, it was just misinformation, disinformation. And, and then I got a different feel from you guys. So yeah, I, like Sophia, I went, as first thing I did, turned off that TV, turned on my laptop and went to the group and never looked back. Awesome. We just got a few more minutes here let the audience or the viewer decide what they take away from it. I'm going to go back to just what he said. It's probably as good as mine. What we've done is tried to present, probably, in, in essence, the story in as true a fashion as we can and let the audience or the viewer decide what they take away from it. That's mm. it. That's Mr. Nelson's film. Um, <clears throat> that's all I wanted to cover here today any any final thoughts before we before i head on out thanks for showing that thanks for letting us join because i sure. i have not seen that before yeah if i can find that other clip we we can jump back on at some point and do uh, something similar that one i think is a little bit longer that's the one where he actually mentions the quote unquote sloppy which i thought was pretty cool it's like wow we, we've we've made it here we've made it i found that in an article <laughs> actually not yeah right after I, I actually i saved it off to send it to you because <laughs> someone wrote it in an article online and they used the in quote sloppy and they go they heard greg <laughs> 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 they're quoting 
including Greg. That was pretty cool. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to find that clip. That would be great. He has a nice little audio clip from Mr. Nelson at some point. But All right. Well, thank you both for joining me here on short notice. And um, we'll definitely be, be in touch. And God bless everybody. Thank you all for watching, for listening. We got some new things coming up here. And uh, we are working on a new book, uh, all three of us. On, and a few other people have actually received some... I don't know if this person wants me to mention it yet, but I have received a chapter from another person who is going to write um, their thoughts on this case. And then we've got a few other other people that we're still waiting for. Um, so I don't want to, to reveal it yet until we have till they you know, actually have something there. And we are still shooting for a January 17th, 2023 uh, published date, but it's not set in stone. There's still a chance that we may have to push that back. And I have no problem with pushing that back because I want this book to be as good as it can be. So, um, I'd rather take more, more time if, if needed, and then put it out in the, in the summertime. So everybody can sit outside in the nice warm air and, uh, read this, this book. Um, that's kind of the, the plan. So I know I've been kind of pushing for a certain deadline, but um, there's there's a good chance that we may not make that deadline and the book may get pushed back a little bit. You never know. Yeah, never know. So God bless you all. And uh, Catherine, Sophia, thank you for joining me here. Catherine, you have any um, any new, are you, are you and Sophia working on any new videos that are gonna be on your channel anytime soon? Um, we Well, we will. I been having to deal with some personal stuff so she's being very patient and um so she's been spending all of her time on the book as you'll hear but yeah we i mean so give us time we have stuff in the works but it'll be a bit yet awesome mm -hmm. yeah and i've been working i just finished uh because i love to you know i've tried this a couple times writing uh typing chapters out and then writing and i love handwriting chapters first and then just typing it out because then it's um, then I'm also in I'm like in the second draft mode mm -hmm. so it's you know it's it really works out and then sometimes I write it on paper and I don't really like it and so I can scrap it right there but if I've already typed it up it's a little more difficult it's a little more tedious so I found um I've been working on this uh Danny Danny August Mason chapter and so last night I ended up writing about four or five more pages for it and um, the the offer for Danny August Mason is still out there. If he ever wants to debate on this case, I would be more than happy to set up a day, to set up a, a time where we can do that on a form just like this. Danny August Mason is the one who made that offer, who made the quote unquote challenge. And I accepted that challenge. And then he went dark, never heard from him after that. So it's an open door challenge for, for him. Um, if he ever wants to, uh, we can definitely make that happen. So God bless you all. And until next time. What about Sophia? Sophia, you got anything in the, in the works here? When are you going to get your YouTube channel going on? Yeah. Up and, up and running probably here. After, probably after, after the first of the year. I've been thinking about it seriously. Okay. So I'd like to get a different microphone, but I'm waiting until I'm done paying for Christmas. Cool. I can um, relate to that. Yeah. So, and I've also been working very hard on the chapters and trying to get those out. So. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. There's still a few I have to I have to go back and look at um, and finalize. And we're all going to need to have another session um, to talk about where where we are. And uh, I'm not a spreadsheet person, but I know that I need to get this on it on a spreadsheet. It'll make my life easier. And then um, we can calculate what chapters we all have done, what chapters we're still working on, et cetera, et cetera. I love spreadsheets. I love to make them. I will do, do you? one for yeah. you. Just send me the info. Okay. Let yeah, Catherine yeah. make okay. it up, please. That was part yeah. of my job, creating databases yeah. and stuff. I love it. <laughs> Very cool because I hate spreadsheets. But I feel like I can't keep doing it on paper because then I just end up scratching things out and up, it's just, I have a paper system, but it's not going to work for the, for this project to make sure that I, you know, do everything that I need to, to do on time. So, yeah. and to make sure all of our chapters uh, come in and that we get, make sure that the final version is the one that ends up showing up. So I'm very happy about that. Very happy well, about this, he, this project. 
did you want to discuss some of this off air? Yeah, definitely off off air. Probably won't, won't have time now, but um, mm-hmm. maybe in, in the next day or two, I'd love to do another another phone call and we can all chat about it. Okay. All right. Sounds get, great. Get some updates once I update some of my files here. <laughs> but I got to type this out and then I got to, I think, Sophia, I think I still have to send you back another chapter or two. So the, I sent you the parallels and the DNA. So okay. those are two really big chapters for you to go through. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Well, dokey. everybody have a great day. Have a great Saturday. And, um, until next time. Yep. Have a great day. Too. Bye.